Hey everyone, Trey with Veris Technologies here. Got a video that's not scripted. It's gonna be just kind of off the cuff here. I want, I'm experimenting with something. Um, trying to set up a, a Unify uh, VPN endpoint, an L2TP server, and um, using a Synology as the authentication device through Radius. Because a typical small business setup might be, you might have a Unify USG and then Unify Switch and a Unify Access Point and a Synology network storage device. And so why not use your central um, authentication service, which is the Synology, um, to authenticate the VPN users? Um, haven't, I don't know how this is going to go, it's just an experiment. So, um, okay, so real quick, we have a plain um, Synology DS718 Plus, brand new. Um, in fact, if we look at Storage Manager, yeah, it's still verifying the hard disks. I mean, I just got it out of the box a little while ago. Uh, our Unify site is, um, uh, it's a USG and a, a port switch. And I have a cloud key that's running this controller that we're looking at. Um, and the Synology NAS is over there. I have a test computer and my computer, it's not plugged in right now um, to that network, but it has been. <clears throat> and um, the, uh, it's, it's, it is physically plugged in, but the IP is turned off, you'll see here. And, um, in my networking here, it's, it's turned off, so I'm not communicating to that network. Um, and then our, our VLAN switch, which uh, is just to get me connected into that other part of our office. Here, I'll show you real quick. Um, I can connect to that network. And see there, I'm pinging the um, Synology NAS. So uh, I'm just gonna turn that off. And it goes away again, okay. So I've poked some holes through the USG um, to get to the um, Synology. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is go and find their radius server and install that, which is right there. And uh, while that's installing, I believe that what we do on the Synology side is two things. We have to set up to tell the, un I'm sorry, the Unify side, not Synology. We could tell it to talk to Radius, and then we also have to create the, basically the VPN network and tell it to authenticate against that Radius profile. Um, and then set up a VPN connection on my laptop and we'll give it a try. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. Is that, yep, that's already installed. So let's go ahead and configure that, the radius server on the Synology, which if you don't know what radius is, it's what remote access dial-in user service or something like that. It's, it's just basically the user authentication server. And then you could have all kinds of things authenticating against that central database. And here we're gonna tell it, this is the port it runs on, that's the default. Um, we wanna authenticate against local users um, we only, I, I did add two users, a user one and user two, so we could test. And I did create a file share so we could browse to it and see some files in it across the VPN. Uh, but this is just the generic settings. If you're doing LDAP, like out against, I think you can authenticate out against G Suite. Um, or if you have a domain, you could authenticate against that as well and have it come through this radio server. Okay, so we have to define the relationship between the Unify and the Synology. So I'm going to say this is the USG, and you want to put in a decent shared secret to kind of so they could talk to each other, but just for here, I'm just going to put shared secret. And what IP address is allowed? The USG. So that's, that should be it, I would think. And then apply. And I'm guessing that's restarting the radius services. Um, block list, we'll play with that later. Um, and then a log. So I, I think that's all we have to do for here on the 
Synology side. You can see I do have two users I added. Okay, let's go over to the Unify side. And what we're going to do first is define the relationship with the Synology, the radius profile. I think you could do this through the other create network, but I like to, I'm going to go ahead and get it done first here. So, so we'll just say this is Synology radius. Eh, you don't have to call it radius. And what's the IP address of the Synology server? And what's that shared secret? Remember, it's shared. Let's double check. Shared secret. And that's it. There's more you can do. And again, this is not best practice. We're just setting it up to see if it'll work. OK, and now let's go to networks. And we're going to create a new network that's a remote user VPN. And we'll, call, we'll just call it same thing. And we're going to do L2TP. I have a MacBook, and I don't think by default you can do PPTP, and you wouldn't want to anyway. But, OK, pre-shared key. Let's just do it again. Pre-shared key. Keep it simple. You would not want to use this. And you want to define what subnet is going to, is this VPN going to run on. So let's just pick something here. How about 44.1 and we'll give it uh, half a class C, which is ridiculous. Let's give it, whoops, there you go, subnet of 16. Um, <clears throat> you can do some overrides on DNS and some other things, but we're just going to leave it all alone. Now, what radius profile do you want to use for your users? We're going to choose the Synology one, and then save it, and let it provision. I think that's it. Um, so now what we've done is we've installed the radius server on the Synology. We've set up a radius profile on the Unify system. And we've created a network, a VPN network, which is a different subnet. Has to be a different subnet uh, on this implementation. Um, and I've told it to authenticate users against that Synology radius profile. So, okay, while that's happening and provisioning, let's go and create a VPN connection. Now, remember, or if we look at, let's look at our map real quick. Where, where my computer is right now physically, regardless of the fact that it, in fact, I'll just unplug my network over there. Um, regardless of the fact that it shows me I'm not plugged in to that private network over there at all. Um, I am out here on the public side of the USG. Um, I'm on the external side of it. So let's make sure that's provisioned. OK, and let's add a VPN connection. Yep, in fact, you see, it's showing me disconnected from the, um, the Synology, my network share. <coughs> OK, so we're going to do a new VPN connection, L2TP. I'm going to leave the name alone. I don't care. This is just play. I'm putting the public address, which you know, you, it would be the public facing internet address or host name. Um, we always recommend setting up host names. I just have a user off the Synology, and I want to put in the user password up here, and I want to put in the shared secret here. Now, this is the Unify shared secret um, on the network, remember, which I think I just made shared, pre shared key. Um, yep, that's this right here. So actually, I'll just copy it and paste it. And that's it. Now, because I'm going to be getting to other networks behind the USG, other than the VPN network, uh, where my Synology is, like to share files and stuff, I need to 
go to on a Mac, I need to go to Advanced and send all traffic over the VPN connection. Okay, now let's. I'm going to bring over my ping here. That's pinging the Synology, and we'll tell it to connect and see what happens. It's connected, and there's the pinging. So that worked. Um, and let's bring up my network window here. And I should see, well, I don't see it because it's browsing other stuff, but we can type it in manually. We're going to connect to server and put in the IP address of the Synology. connect as user1 okay and it popped up another window there but so you can see there's some files I put in there um, I'll just delete them real quick Let's just copy that a few more times. And you can see if I go to my file manager on the Synology, there I've copied all those files. That's it. That's the basic setup, I, I guess. <laughs> Again, this is not best practices. You'd want to use good keys, good passwords, etc. cetera. Um, one thing that I am interested in that I don't know how that works, but we could test real quick is the, I'm going to close some of these things, and we don't need them anymore, we know it works, um, is the user group filtering kind of, um, I'm going to disconnect here from the VPN, and so you can see we're disconnected, we we'll go back to the radius server to the block list, <coughs> and I'm going to block, um, Let's go create a user group real quick. You should be able to allow and block, but I only see block. So let's create a group called VPN do not allow. These users should not have VPN access. I have no clue if this is going to work. <laughs> Um, assign shared folder. This doesn't have anything to do with files. This is just VPN stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and let it go all the way through. And then let's take our user one and add him to the do not allow VPN group. Okay, so now user one, which we were using, is in the don't allow to VPN group, but that doesn't mean anything yet. So let's go to the radius server and block that group. Now I would guess that that means that user doesn't have access. So let's give it a shot and see. All right. So here's my, uh, just for giggles, I'll bring up my ping also. Let's go ahead and connect. Authentication failed. Okay. Well, that, I would expect, I would expect that. Now I have a second user, user two, has the same password, same share access, and all that stuff. So let's, but that user's not in the, that do not allow group. Let's go ahead and connect and see what happens. Connected. Okay. Well, there we go. So I guess, I mean, I, I definitely recommend you read all the uh, articles that Unify has on their remote user VPN stuff so that you can tweak it and look at the firewall rules to define what subnets you want people to have access to and what subnets you don't. You need to have the rules in place there. But in this default setup just for testing, you can see that you can use... Um, um, Obviously, you can use any radius 
source for your users, but this is a very common setup for small business, small office. They don't want big servers. They don't want all that stuff. And um, so this is just a nice way to keep your users in a central area and um, uh, authenticate the VPN across it. Okay, thanks. Any questions or comments, you can post them below, um, and I'll check those once every three or four years, I guess. Um, but that's about it. Thank you very much.